Good evening, all, and welcome to Ask the Knights Live. I am Lord Calberter Geiler, Companion of the Meridian Cross, Companion of the Argent Lamp, Companion of the Argent Comet, Companion of the Falcon's Faith, and Reaper, coming to you live from the Barony of the Osprey on the southern coast of Meridies. Now, clearly, I am not Baron Logan Path Warden. Uh, so, Logan had to step away this week to uh, deal with some family issues and asked me to step in and uh, take over the show, and I am honored to do so. I have two amazing nights tonight, both from my home kingdom, and this is just a delight to do for me. Uh, but I will ask our audience to keep Logan in your thoughts uh, as he deals with the things he has to deal with. So without further ado, let's get into the show. Uh, I'd like to welcome, as I said, from Meridies, uh, Sir Chinwa Kadanjin and the baby knight of the kingdom, Sir Pietro di Vitavia. <laughs> Welcome, guys. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Yeah. All right. So, uh, we always like to start off with a little bit of introductions from our guests. So, why don't you uh, give us a little bit of introduction, sort of, and tell us about your uh, your your path? What what brought you to knighthood? Like, so, let's start with that. We'll uh, we'll start with. Uh, as the baby knight in the room, I think Pietro should go first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good evening. My name is Sir Pietro de Vitavia. Um, I've been fighting for, I want to say, 12 years now. Uh, my path was, uh, was a fun one. Um, <laughs> I started in Meridies. Uh, I moved out of Kingdom. Um, I lived in Kalantir for a while. Um, it was about two years I lived in Kalantir. Um, had a bunch of fun, a bunch of adventures there, learned a lot of new things. Um, let me backtrack. So I was in Meridius for about two years, and I was arrogant, cocky, and full of myself. <laughs> and then I moved to Kalantir, where I was arrogant, cocky, and full of myself. And I met a couple of knights that um, reminded me of my place in the world, and that was uh, Pell for a few years. But I got better, um, and then I came back, and... I was still a little arrogant and cocky, but I have matured over those four years. Um, and I, those first four years, knighthood wasn't a thing. It wasn't a, it wasn't really something I thought about. And then I met some people and they started putting bugs in my head and I started taking things a little more, a little bit more seriously and started playing the game a little bit more seriously and started being, following the path of chivalry and trying to, trying to get there. Um, there were times where, I was just having fun, but um, I saw a lot of friends get knighted. I saw a lot of good things, and it kind of inspired me to get to that point one day. And honestly, that was my cat. That shadow wasn't a ghost. Um, <laughs> and honestly, it was it was watching a lot of people and having people influence me that finally started getting me down that path. And it just happened. It was a surprise. I didn't expect it. I wasn't asking. I wasn't. I always told myself when it happened, it would be great if it ever happened. So, and now I'm here, the baby knight of the kingdom. There you go. So, so we were talking about this before October, 2019, you said, right? Uh, October, 2019. Yeah. Uh, it was red tower. Yeah. So, so it was the last night in Meridian. And that's, that's crazy to think of that it's been that long. So, yeah. All right. So, uh, Chinwa, that brings it to you. Tell us about you. Uh, my name is, uh, Chinwa Khadanjian, um, uh, 13th century Mongol. Um, I started in the SCA for about that long in Castle North in Hawaii, um, and then moved to Maryland and was in Atlantia for about that long. And then I moved to Savannah, Meridies, and I've been here for most of the rest of it. I had a very short stint in Calentier as well. Um, but uh, my first event was in February of 97. Uh, Valentine's Day, 97, as a matter of fact. Oh. And I got knighted 11 years and two days after my first event at uh, same site, different event, same site, um, on February 16th, 2008. Um, I aspired to John the Mad Kelp. Um, I uh, tinkered around with doing other things besides fighting for a little while and then decided that fighting was what I really enjoyed in the SCA and kind of jumped into it with both feet back in early 97, 98, and, and been pursuing it as best I can since then. Um, so that's it. 
Excellent. So, so you, you were squire to the Mad Kelt. Oh. Yes, I was uh, Duke of John Mad Kelt squire. Number I had the privilege of meeting him uh, by midwinter last year, just before COVID. And I was like, I was watching him fight, and I was like, oh, I, he's old and slow. I can go follow him. <laughs> he's great. <laughs> I, oh, that's I, funny. Wrong. Oh, was yeah. I wrong? That's funny. He's, he's a tiny wizard, is what he is. I think that's what it is. He actually has magical powers, frankly. <laughs> You know, it, like that. It's funny you mentioned that because when I first fought him, it was at a Castle Wars. I was I don't know how long ago, and I had the same thought. And he proceeded to um, hit me really fast, and I was like, "What? No!" <laughs> <laughs> and I I don't think I've ever laid stick on him. So I mean, <laughs> I, I hit his shield a whole lot. That's what I did. Yeah, yeah, same. <laughs> uh, uh, John, for, for anybody who doesn't know. Uh, has literally been fighting in the SCA longer than I've been alive. Yep. Um, he was knighted in 75 um, and has been around with the kingdom and the SCA for a long, long time. He has a five digit uh, membership number. Mm -hmm. And he told me once if he had been a few months earlier, he'd had a four digit membership number. So the, the guy is a, a legend in our kingdom and uh, just a great guy. Yeah. Oh, he's awesome. No, super great. Yeah, yeah, he, and physically, he's like four foot tall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and his shield is like three and a half foot tall. I mean, it, it, it's ridiculous. So, yeah. If you ever get a chance, fight him. You'll, you'll enjoy every second of it. I'll tell you that. Because as much as I, I hated getting beat, I enjoy every second of that fight. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so for our audience out there, uh, we have a, I have a series of questions here that Logan sent me that are through his normal docket. And I've even added a couple of my own flair. Uh, but we want to have your questions. So, in the comments or in the private chat or the chat on YouTube, Submit those uh, those questions in. We have two great nights, and we want to hear your great questions. So this show is not uh, not the same without you guys submitting to it. I could talk for an hour. I do it on a regular basis, but I'd much rather have your questions being answered. So uh, make sure you include your SCA name and title um, in those just so we can properly credit you. All right. So uh, first up, so we, we talked a little bit about how you came to the SCA. Uh, an important question for me, and this is, this is also sort of a, a, a two-parter, what keeps you coming back? And how have you stayed engaged during COVID? Ooh. I know, right? Yeah, there you go. So it's, it's, it's <laughs> the day, what, what, what keeps you engaged during COVID? Gotcha. The, the first part's easy to answer. It's, it's the fighting and the people. And um, the, the fighting is just a tremendous amount of fun. And the people are, are great. Uh, I've made a lot of really amazing friends over the years. And, um, and part of my answer for the second part of that question, what keeps me um, motivated is getting to see those people again. Um, like you said, I, I've, I have a handful of, of truly great relationships with friends that if I lost those via COVID, via quitting playing in the SCA, whatever the case is, that I truly would feel there was something missing in my life because those people were no longer around. Even if I don't see those people every day or every week or even every month, um, the, the people, the energy they give off, the, the atmosphere, that the, the friends and, the, and the, the, the whole look of it, the 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 feeling you get when you're at an event uh, is what keeps me coming back and what's what making me want to return. As soon as COVID's over, soon we can get back. <laughs> so. Pedro, what you got? Could you repeat the question? Sure. <laughs> uh, so, what keeps you coming back to the SCA? And then how have you stayed engaged since, uh, since COVID? Uh, what keeps me coming back is uh, a lot like chilling with the friends, the um, the camaraderie. Uh, I like to add competition. I'm very competitive. Chin will tell you he's known me since day one. Uh, I can be very competitive, <laughs> and uh, the drive to just keep bettering myself in because I look at what we do as a as the fighting aspect. I look at it as a martial art. And I came into the SCA. I was doing. Um, jiu-jitsu and all kinds of other martial arts and so for me it just was a different way of competing um but mostly it's my friends it's just i i can go to an event and not fight and still have a great time right. and um if i were to go to like a grambling competition i'd grapple have fun and then leave you know this is so much different so it's like that 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 bond those bonds you make with people and also watching people grow in the sca is another thing that keeps me going it's like you meet somebody and they don't know anything and all of a sudden you see them two, three years later and they're full, like head deep 
you know, into the SEA and they're teaching you things. So, you know, that's what keeps me coming back. I like that. Uh, a follow-up question <laughs> Pietro from Graf Ulrich. Uh, when did we knight Ming the Merciless? <laughs> <laughs> I am never going to not be called that. I really, you know what? I'm really thinking about changing my SEA name to something Ming. <laughs> <laughs> Had to throw that out uh, before you It was it was in October of 2019. Uh, I think you came late. Uh, it was it was mentioned earlier. <laughs> uh, I, I I told you that I, I warned you ahead of time that Ulrich would be in the comments. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm not. He'd be there. <laughs> All right. Uh, cool. See, so, yeah, I, I think I think that seems to be the most common answer is is the people, right? The SCA is about the people. We could, we could get rid of any one part of it. We can never fight again. We can never do ANS. But man, the people that be in there really makes the FDA what it is. You're absolutely correct. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, so as knights, man, armor and weapons are an important part of that. So, you, you guys have been fighting for a little bit, and you've had, I'm sure, some, some a variety of armor kits. So, tell us about your first armor kit, and tell us about your current armor kit, and how different are they? You're okay. First, so, sure. I'm on first. So. All right, my first armor kit was was pretty bad. Um, it was that uh, Bringin' Dean kind of cheap 20 gauge steel that bent and my helmet was 16 gauged and it got dented and hurt my head. So I learned real quick. And then um, somebody had mentioned the armor archive, actually uh, Alberon, he's a member of our Shire. Um, he's chin with Squire actually. Um, he had mentioned the armor archive and I found the armor archive. And then funny or not, um, I saw a picture of Logan in this really cool 14th century kit. And it was like, oh, awesome. And the dude's short like me. Bet I could do this. Sorry, Logan, I had to throw that out there. Um, <laughs> but his kit like legit like had me like really looking into 14th century stuff. And it was like the kit that I put together was nothing like his, but it still inspired me to like kind of do that. And then there was other kits in the armor archive. And then at one point they started doing kits to inspire you on the armor archive. And it was super cool. Cause there was a picture of me, little plug there. This is back in the day before Facebook guys. Um, but there was a kit of me, there was a picture of me and before me was, um, was, was Logan and I was like, oh, because there were so many kits in that in that thread that like had inspired me. So um, my first kit was like, you know, crappy, and then I kind of upgraded. And now my most recent kit is actually a, um, I guess you would call it late period Varangian, um, more like Anglo Varangian. So like when the Varangian, when the Anglo's got beat, they um, they went over to. Uh, Byzantium and we're like, hey, can we work for you? So that's what my kid's based on. It's a lamellar body, uh, small brim kettle helm, and then I have, um, you know, floating knees and um, elbows, and then uh, fan braces and uh, greaves that match. So that's it now. All right. My first kit, um, I was scared to death of getting hurt. Um, super, super paranoid. So I wore every piece of owner armor I could get my hands on and then still put stuff on top of it. I had carpet armor. Um, it was in black fabric, so at least it was covered. And then over the top of the, the um, carpet armor, which came over my shoulders, chest, and wrapped around my waist, um, there was a kidney belt and a sort of a leather sewed um gamison that went over the top of that and i did things like i put shin guards on the back of my arms because i was so paranoid about being hit <laughs> um and uh wore two kinds of thigh armor shifted to the inside of my thighs as well as the outside of it. and i was like a kid from um uh, the Christmas movie, I can't put my arms down. <laughs> it's so much okay. stuff on me, and I would just go out and try and, you know, <laughs> slowly but surely, with the help of uh, a few of the guys in the local group at the time, slowly figured out I didn't need the shin guards on the back of my arms, and I didn't need this, and I didn't need that. <laughs> Middle of the way, middle of the way. And uh, currently, I wear uh, 
it's a horseman's armor, Mongol horseman's armor, it's uh, It's a two piece of chest, shoulders and back, and then a skirt piece that protects the uh, thighs and butt. Um, I wear mundane knees under clothes, and then uh, bands and, and, and um, uh, sort of the, the traditional, would you imagine to sort a Mongol helmet, you know, with the, the hair coming out of the top and leather and hair, uh, fur wrapped around, that kind of a thing. So uh, much, 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 much improved from what I was originally wearing. <laughs> I just want to add, he still doesn't like to get hit. He's I just don't. gotten better at not getting hit. That's, I just wanted to throw that out there. He doesn't like it. He's just gotten smarter and he's not there when you throw the shot instead of being covered in five layers of armor, which I did not know that. So thank you for the, the history lesson there. When the sword here, will be there. So Exactly. Yes, that's the first lesson you ever taught me. <laughs> See, I was always taught just block better. You know, you yeah, yeah, block yeah. better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, yeah. So that yeah, that's I, I, I so I, I imagine the kid from the Little Giants. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. That's what I saw. Yeah, I was like, that works. But hey, yeah, yeah, you're not getting hurt. I, I guess it works. So, all right, man. I got some good questions coming through in the comments. I've got one more of my own, and then we'll move to those. Uh, so, so you guys live uh, in sort of a, a on the outskirts of our kingdom. So, and, and I, I can I can commiserate being on literally the ass end of the other end. Um, so for for y'all when you're when you're as knights in sort of traveling and training, uh, is there are ch are there challenges that you guys face being on the outskirts, um, both as knights and as fighters and that sort of thing? Um, uh, to give everybody a little bit of of sort of background, uh, we're in Savannah, Georgia. Um, the next closest group to us in Meridia is about an hour or so, forty five minutes or an hour up the road in Statesboro. Um, beyond that, the next closest group to us is, is uh, the group in Jacksonville, Florida, which is in Tramaris. And then the, the next one close to that is actually in Atlantia, in Charleston, South Carolina. And then you get to the next Meridian group in Macon, Georgia, um, two and a half hours, no, two and a half to three hours away. Um, Savannah is on the very eastern, we are the farthest eastern group in Meridians. Um, and many of the sites that um, Meridians use, especially a while back, we're in northern Alabama, which is an eight to nine hour drive, you know, from here. Um, so the big challenges, especially at first, is getting off work, packing the car, driving for nine hours and trying to set up a tent in the dark and get up with enough energy the next morning to fight and do well. <laughs> um, and then pack it all back up, drive home. And it makes it makes it, it made eventing um, um, laborsome at times to just that oh the drive i'm gonna have so much fun when i get there that drive it's it's you know six to you know the average site that we use is four hours away from us um so anything that we do as far as fda goes um, we really have to make plans there's very little spur of the moment of yeah i think i'll go to the event this weekend just throw the stuff in the car and go because of jobs and, and mundane responsibilities just getting there can be a real uh, a real chore and um but I, I would just like to throw this out as sort of the last little bit if you are in a small group or a fringe group that is far away um you can do it you got it just keep plugging along just keep doing it you can get there it it, it, it is possible 100 percent is possible um when i joined the shire in 97 there have been three attempts to make a group in savannah and all three had fallen apart um, I was the first peer elevated in this group. We had one guy who was a royal peer, um, who won crown list, uh, Jarl Artan Magdara. Um, and, but I was the first knight. I was the first peer in this group. 11 years later, I was the first peer in this group. Um, being in a fringe group can be very difficult and, and, and tenacity going after getting out there, trying your best to make it there is, is, is a huge thing. But yeah, the challenges a lot of times is just getting to events. Right. <clears throat> so the question was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, let me be real right now. I got ADHD, so I We're sometimes good. get I listen, but I get distracted. All right. So some of the challenges, like Chen was saying, the drive, the distance. Um, you're not in the center of the kingdom, you're not close to the center of the kingdom, so making a name for yourself is a lot more challenging. Um, 
when you go to events, I, I'm not going to, you know, just, I'm not going to repeat what Chin was said. Yes. Everything Chin was said, I completely agree with. Um, but I'm going to add to that. And it's basically, you have to work twice as hard because you're not at the center of the kingdom or close to the center of the kingdom. So, you know, going to practices is you're practicing with your own guys, with your local people way more than you are other people. We're in Meridies. Atlanta is like, or Atlanta, I'm sorry, Atlanta <laughs> is, um, is not the geographical center, but a lot of events happen in and around Atlanta. Um, so we can't just decide, Hey, we're going to go hit up, um, you know, deep Dale's practice this weekend because it's a two hour drive. It'll be fine for us. It's, it's a four, four hour drive, six hour drive with traffic. So we have to work twice as hard to make a name for ourselves and to get that, that notoriety. And, um, it, it, it can be, it can be tough because when you're starting off, you're not going to go out there and start you know, wowing people or, or getting people's attention. You're just going to go out there. You're going to have fun. Um, but like I said, it's, it's just gaining that notoriety. I think that's one of the hardest things. Um, it's almost like you have to make yourself famous by, by doing more and working twice as hard. So people will remember you if that makes sense. So. Oh, definitely. Uh, I think, uh, so it's, it's funny. So, so hearing you guys say that, because again, yeah, I'm, I'm three or four hours from, from the next event, you know, from anything going on. Now, fortunately, I've got a group an hour either direction into Glen Auburn and Sterling Meridian. I've heard some of the Westies talk about theirs. They're in a similar situation, even on the coast, because they're so long. That, yeah, it's two and three hours to their next group. So yeah, I think that's definitely something that people are to, to consider. Uh, we had a comment was says, as a Nova Scotian in the East. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> My heart goes out to you. Yeah. There you go. All right. So uh, we've got some 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 uh, audience submitted question here. Please keep those questions coming. We've got a couple of good ones, but we have we have plenty of time, so we'll get right into those. Uh, so let's talk fighting. What is your favorite <laughs> weapon system and why? This is from the Honorable Lord Thorin in the East. Favorite weapon system and why? Uh, you're appropriate. Go for it. All right. So of course, sword and shield is my go-to for everything. Um, it's fun, and I like the defense and all that. Um, aside from sword and shield, which you know is my bread and butter, uh, I love longsword. I'm not that great at it. I'm really not. I have fun with it. Um, the reason why I like longsword is because um, for me and everything I've seen, it's like what the one thing we do that translates almost perfectly with the historical aspect as far as the fighting goes. Um, Anything I can do with a real longsword, I can do with a rattan longsword. And the techniques and stuff are, are it just translates perfectly. So for me, it's sword and shield, of course, and then longsword. Um, and there's something a little more visceral about it, a little more, you know, um, because you get in there and it, it's, you don't have a shield to defend you. You just got your little skinny stick to go with you and, and you know, or if you're in that line here, you're two by four. <laughs> But <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. I love you all. Uh, but, you know, it, to me, it's more visceral. It's it's more in your face. Um, and the thing is, a long story fight can last five minutes or 30 seconds, just depending on how you maneuver and stuff. So, yeah, that's my answer. <laughs> yeah. Um, my preferred uh, weapon style, again, is also the same thing with Sir Pietro's sword and shield. Um, over the years, I've been through a number of shields. Um, I, I started out really not knowing what kind of shield to fight with. I fought with a, a strapped on round, and my leg told me that I shouldn't do that anymore, so I switched to different things. Ultimately, ended up fighting for years with a strapped on heater shield, which is totally period for a Mongol. Uh, so, you know, switching to different kinds of center grip shields for, for the Mongol persona kind of thing was a center grip round, which I didn't like. I was used to having that corner um, that you get with a heater. And so I have a, a rectangle that I use now that I, I really prefer and really like that. The inside, this corner close to the face and then the opposite corner far away from the leg, um, I find really saved me. Um, I really hate it. Yeah. 
<laughs> and I also, as far as outside of sword and shield fighting, I really enjoy spear fighting. I don't do it anywhere near as enough uh, or as often as I should. Um, I get sort of scope locked sometimes at events and just grab my sword and shield and go. Um, I've had a tremendous amount of fun um, spear fighting in war situations, you know, and um, I really do think that's probably my my second favorite weapon style. And, and again, I don't pick it up anywhere near as much as I should. I really need to do more of it, but um, that's my second one. I do want to add one thing. Um, I, as far as the fighting goes, um, he was talking about his shield. I should have mentioned that I fight with a peak heater uh, for similar reasons. Um, that little peak up there, it, it makes it makes blocking so much easier. So I just wanted to throw that out there. It's uh, I, I didn't even think about the shield, but yeah, shield style or the type of shield you use is also seriously important. So. Yeah, I like a peak teeter, and I've been using it since day one. I never had an issue. <laughs> like, I saw the style one day, and I was like, I like that. I want to use it. And it's kind of sort of period. No, really, but, yeah, it's it's close, like close, close. close enough. Close enough. Yeah, so to say, I was going to say, uh, I was coming to comment on the, the Mongol with a strapped heater. I, yeah, yeah. It doesn't quite, doesn't quite work. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't go like Madu, man. I want to see a Mongol with a Madu <laughs> out there, you know? Friends don't let friends my don't. <laughs> I, did, I did have some, some guys come up to me after a little while of fighting. I was starting to, starting to come up. And I was a squire at that point. I was still fighting with that shield. Some guys come over and kind of pulled me off the side. And say, oh, you got to talk. <laughs> I need to get rid of that shield. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I'm going to add to like his little rectangle shield. It ain't little, but it ain't <laughs> big either. I can't stand. I, oh, my God. Like, you don't understand. It's the most frustrating shield. And I'm just this is a pointer for anybody who's gonna fight me ever. I can't stand it. Okay. It's like he finds these corners and he just blocks everything I throw at him. It's like the most irritating thing. We'll sit there and like we'll be at practice or whatever, and we'll be fighting. And the fight lasts like it feels like 20 minutes because we're throwing shots at each other and he just no, 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 no. Love love I hate those. You love them, I hate them. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I have. Uh, I switched to a to a round shield when I started fighting again. From a, I used to use a, a long kite because again, I'm I'm six five, so I had a long kite shield and I loved it. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna go to a round shield. It's more pure. I'm gonna do Norse with round shield. My leg regrets every second of that choice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm getting better at it. So, all right. So, uh, so actually, on that note, you mentioned spear fighting. Uh, we have a question from uh, from our host Baron Logan Path Warden. Do you consider yourself a war knight or a tournament knight? And and uh, and I'll even add to that. And what's what is the what's the importance of both of those? Um, definitely more of a tournament knight than a war knight, um, and not in any way, shape, or form to not war fighting at all. Um, my personal preference is uh, tournament fighting and pickup fighting. Um, uh, having a, a good melee to really push you and push the people around you. To work as a team, to work as a unit, and get in there. And, and when things get really hairy and people are climbing all over you and whatnot, it's just a blast. Um, but I do think I am more of a of a tournament fighter. Um, I think a lot of the people in my lineage were more <laughs> tournament fighters than war fighters. Um, uh, the as far as the the sort of the importance of each or, or both. Um, in Meridiase, I think it's very much important to be able to do both and be involved in both. Um, I, I've been to some other things where people have said, well, we, we focus mainly on this or we focus mainly on that. And um, it's all perfectly well and good. Um, I think having a diverse unit or a diverse uh, fighting repertoire makes you a better fighter. Um, you would be a better tournament fighter if you fight in wars, you will be a better war fighter if you fight in tournaments. Um, not exclusively, of course, but you know, the, the more you get out there, the more you cross swords uh, in the different genres that there are, the different kind of weapons you fight. Um, so if you're constantly fighting a guy with a shield and you suddenly fight a guy with two sticks, it can really, really throw you off. But getting out and fighting different weapon styles and fighting in different scenarios and really make you a better fighter. I hope that answers the question. <laughs> yeah, quite, quite well, quite well. Pietro? Uh, I I don't really know how to answer that question. Um, do you need a question? Huh? 
Do you need us to repeat the question? No, no, I remember this one now. I remember <laughs> this one now. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. Yep. Um, no, I, I don't I don't know how to answer the question because I enjoy both. Um, you know, there's something about getting a group of guys um, and, and and lining them up and, and having a goal. Um, I will say most melees, I don't like staying on the shield wall. I like skirmishing. So I'll be behind. And the thing is, melees, I'll, depending on my mood, I'll fight with a spear. But um, I like being a skirmisher. Um, so I really don't know. Like, I enjoy tournaments. And for me, like, that's, to me, the tournament fighting is more testing myself against my opponent and everybody else on that list, um, challenging myself to do better and to go farther in the tournament. Um, and war fighting is more, what is my goal? What is the goal of my group? And how do we achieve that? You know, so I really don't know if I'm a, a war night or a tournament night. Just to me, I enjoy it both. And I don't really see the difference um, in it for me personally. Um, like I said, they both uh, have their own challenges and they both have their 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 fun aspects of it. Um, a lot of times, I, I I look at it as a chess match. Really, when I when I fight, how do I convince my opponent that I'm doing this instead of that and outmaneuver them? And then when so when I'm doing the individual fighting, that's how I think about it. And then when I'm doing melee fighting, war fighting, it's almost the same, but I have more more tools at my disposal at that time. So. I don't really have an answer for it other than everything I just said. <laughs> no, great answer. Uh, so I think the one time I heard the, the difference described between tournament and warfighting is the idea uh, the idea of me versus the idea of we, or the, the me versus us, right? And I think from a, from a night perspective, I think that's really interesting because those are two very different skill sets. It's all swing and sticks, but it's like the idea of what you have to shift changes. So yeah, it's really, it's really interesting. And, and I think balance is, uh, is important. So that's a, so good answer. All right, um, let's see here. Uh, we got a question in about fighting styles. Uh, let me find it, there it is. From Lady Elizabeth from Rodier's. Since both of you have traveled in your SCA life, do you think that the different styles in the kingdoms molded you faster? Um, so when I started, I was in Meridies for about a year and a half, um, and I was learning. I was growing. Um, I had a lot of great teachers. Actually, Chinwa was one of my first teachers. Um, I was super lucky because I had him, and I had Duke Dietrich von Stronheim from all over. <laughs> um, I, I had them as some of my first teachers, um, and uh, Alberon was a great teacher. Um, Jacobus or Co, I think his name is Jean Michel. He was another teacher. I, I was super lucky to have these really great teachers. Um, but my my fighting career was just beginning, and then I moved, uh, and I was always late to practice too. So I mean, I lost a lot of valuable time. <laughs> but uh, when I moved to Catlins here, I um, I met um, he was he was just a squire at the time, uh, Count Matsu, and. Um, a couple of other people, but Matsu really took me under his wing and um, he humbled me in a lot of different ways and don't let it get to your head, Matsu, if you're watching this. Um, but he also helped me grow and, and taught me a lot of different things. His knight was a lefty, so he knew how to handle lefties. Um, and so I learned, I learned a lot of different techniques and, um, and then I came back to Meridies and um, I met Sir Duncan. I can't remember his last name, but uh, and there's like if you're if you're if you're from Calentier, you know Sir Duncan is like oh just you know just you know fish in a barrel because there's so many of them. But um, what's, I can't remember. Anyway, uh, he's actually my squire brother, and uh, he was from all over the place too. He taught me a lot of different things. Um, so. It, it helped me because, yeah, I was getting different perspectives from all these different kingdoms, different fighting styles, different techniques, because, you know, every kingdom has their own style. Um, but I kind of took all these different teachers from all over the world with all their different experiences um, and kind of created like what worked for me and what didn't work for me, if that makes sense. So 
Um, yeah. <laughs> but the short I'm version good. is yes. Yes, it did help Mel do faster, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> um, the answer to that question is absolutely positively 100% yes. Um, when something I mentioned earlier that when I got started in the SCA, I was scared to death of getting hit. I was scared to death of getting hit. I was so afraid I was going to get hurt. And not just bruised, but I mean, I was really scared that I was going to get hurt. And there was a guy, um, uh, uh, King at one point, uh, Jarl Artur McDara, who tried everything he could think of to break me of this. And different shield styles, different lengths of swords, just specifically to fight me. Um, and then ultimately grabbed a, a four-foot spear in his left hand and uh, a sword in his right. And I had no choice but to advance on him. And it really helped break me over the fear of getting hit. And you realize that if you take a few shots it, that you're not hurt. You got hit. Yeah, that stung a bit or you left a bruise, but you're not hurt. And so when I go to events, uh, when I go to places I've never been before, when I go to you know bigger events, Gulf Wars, Pensac, whatever it is, and we're doing pickups, I try and find people who aren't fighting with the same style as I am, not sword and shield, or you know, if they're fighting with two sticks or, or great sword or whatever it is, and ask them if I can fight them with my sword and shield, as I think that makes me a better fighter. It really helps me think outside of the normal block of this, strike there, back and forth, back and forth. And um, going around to the different groups and fighting in you know different kingdoms where they're just their normal day-to-day -day fighting is different than Meridian day-to-day -day fighting. Um, really, really helps. I highly, highly, highly encourage anybody who wants to get better at fighting is to fight people with a different style of weapon than what you're using. Uh, especially at first, you're going to get beat up. <laughs> you're going to take some lumps. But you will be a better fighter in the long run for it. So. There you go. Yep. Yeah, one thing I really enjoyed about living on the edge of the kingdom is I can hop a uh, 30 minutes or an hour in one direction and go play in Glen Alvin for a bit. And it's a different world over there. It really is. I, I didn't I didn't realize it at first when but it's a it's a different mentality, different fighting style, and it, it definitely changed. Uh and even honestly going from the being on the south end of the kingdom going up into like the Atlanta area. Mm -hmm. Those are different. It's where we're in the same kingdom. It's a different mentality still. It's a different you get a different fighting style. So yeah, travel is the answer, I think. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So we've got a, uh, to, to shift off of fighting for a minute. I know, right? Who wants to do that? What discipline outside of heavy fighting helped you grow the most in becoming a knight and why? This is from uh, Demetrios from the East. So what Ooh. thing outside of fighting was you, was most influential in you for your knight career, your knight path? Outside of, uh, if, we're, if we're talking like um, some other kind of fighting, uh, like a martial art kind of a thing, I really didn't get into any kind of martial arts. Um, uh, stick fighting, for lack of a better way to word it, was the one that really grabbed me. I tried judo, I tried karate, I tried a bunch of different other things, even um, to a lesser degree, streamer, um, for a little while. And um, none of them ever really grabbed me like the SCA fighting style did. Uh, outside of combat related um, disciplines, um, really, uh, I think trying to have a focus or a goal and not to say that knighting was my, was my goal but i want to be a better fighter i want to beat that guy i want to block that shot um there was a guy uh in our kingdom i believe is in glen Alban now uh, duke gareth who had the, sh the shot where he started and he would drop and then flat snap and he could hit me with that shot at will, and it became a passion of mine to block that shot. I and mean, he killed me in a tournament once. I did, please, not that shot. Anything but that shot. I'll stick my ribs out. I don't care. Just please, not that shot. You know. And having a, a, a drive or, or, or a goal or something specific that I could work towards really helped me. With and, and, and fighting in general and being um, an, an adult and being a man and being involved with things, having um, focus really, uh, really, I think, helped me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> oh my god! Yeah, just keep that going. That's great. Help it out, Pedro. Help it out. Yeah. No, it's fine. It's fine. Um. So for me, I did a lot of different martial arts growing up. I did judo. I tried taekwondo for a week. Um. You know, got a brown belt when I was done. It was great. Um. No. Um. Uh, I tried all different kinds. When I found the SEA, I was uh, doing jujitsu, and um. I guess one of the things that the, the the way that discipline helped me was I wasn't afraid to get in your face. I wasn't afraid to be scrappy. You know, I wasn't afraid to get hit. No offense. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I, uh, it took me a while though to like really marry the two together. Um, actually Jean-Michel was still in our Shire at the time and he, figured out that oh this guy moves like like a grappler like like a boxer almost let me work with him and he was able to get me to improve my shots um by making it seem like boxing and then um i remember uh count sinclair we had gone up to atlantia for uh something out there and count sinclair was there and i was just i was a pal for everybody at that practice <laughs> um and then Count Sinclair, he did his uh, uh, parrot on the shoulder uh, lesson with me. And it really helped me to um, to marry like the boxing and the jujitsu and all that stuff with heavy fighting. So mainly it was uh, jujitsu because like I said, jujitsu taught me to not be afraid to get in somebody's face and get up close and personal. So. Sure, sure. Yep. All right. All right. Uh, we actually have two questions that came in sort of together, and these are, I think, both for Pietro, so we'll let him handle these all solo. Uh, so Lord Crispy wants to know, why are you left-handed? <laughs> and then so, the, more, the slightly more serious question that follows that is the, uh, since you're lefty, do you have any advice for other lefties? That's from Lady Elizabeth. Okay, I'll answer the first question. I'm left-handed because Mama Pietro and Daddy Pietro uh, <laughs> <laughs> fell in love and the stork was like can i jump in here <laughs> <laughs> and they were like i'm left-handed she's right-handed and then the stork flipped the coin and when he dropped me off um it landed on um tails because that's what papa pietro said and so now i'm left-handed there you go that, that good um and as as far as advice for a lefty um one thing I hear a lot when I fight is you don't fight like a lefty. Um, I don't know what that means. I fight like Pietro, honestly. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, I couldn't tell you, um, but I will tell you this. Most people who say you don't fight like a lefty mentioned that I don't, I don't, um, I don't lean on raps or I don't lean on this or I don't lean on that. Um, like I said, I've been fighting for a long time in different disciplines. Um, but um, I don't necessarily follow everything. Um, the I don't fight like a lefty. I I don't like I said. I don't know what that means. I'm a lefty, so I fight like a lefty because that's what I am. Um, but try different things. You're gonna meet all kinds of people. And they're gonna be like, oh, you're just good because you're a lefty, or you're just good because of this, or you're just good because of that. Um, be good because you're a good fighter. Um, don't focus on just rap shots or offsides. You know, work on your flat snap. Do everything that nobody's going to expect from a lefty. You know, people are going to expect the rap shots. People are going to expect the offsides. They're going to expect all this crazy stuff or all this simple or basic stuff. But if you're a lefty and you throw a flat snap to an onside, most people are going to get surprised by that. So Work with different things. Look at lefties and, and ask other people what do you what what does a lefty normally do? And then don't do it. That that's that's the best advice I could give you. And I guess I just answered my own question. Um, that's what it means to I don't fight like a lefty because I don't and Chinwo can tell you that I don't lean on rap shots, I don't lean on offsides. Um, you know, but I will tell you I know how to manipulate people and make them think I'm gonna do it because oh, he's a lefty, that's your first thought. How do I defend against the rap? How do I defend against the offside? So think outside the, the the lefty box is the best advice I could give you. And then learn how to use that to your advantage. There you go. My, it's all about the mind games, man. I like that. Yep. 
All right. Uh, so, so chill out. I found a question just for you. Uh, this is from Graf Ulrich. Uh, who is your favorite contemporary to fight coming up as a squire? And for Chinwa, why was it Graf Ulrich? <laughs> Uh, I actually tell you a, a very interesting story. Um, uh, coming up one oh, years ago, um, I, I killed him. I think it was in a tournament, and then um, we were doing some melee stuff. And him and I kind of stepped off to the side. We were opposite sides, and he kind of saw me. He's like, "Hey, we should move over here and do our uh, do that fight again," kind of a thing. And I remember him sort of like pinpointing me and saying, you and I, let's step off to the side and redo that fight. And we were in a melee kind of a thing. And so we stepped off to one side and somebody came along and, and, and I think killed him in the middle of, of our fight. But I remember thinking after it was over on the drive home, I was like, that was really cool that he thought enough of me to want to fight me again. And that even in a melee was like, no, 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 let's you and I step off to one side. Um, he paid me, in, in my point of view, uh, a, a huge compliment. And I never forget that. And I, he's told the story a couple times, and, and I've told the story a couple times, and, and it really was a moment for me, you know. So he's kind of right. It was, <laughs> you know, it was one of my favorite fights, you know. It was a lot of fun. And that was a very cool thing that he did, even if he didn't realize – what he was doing, what he did, it, it was still a really cool thing, and I really appreciated it. That's that's an awesome story. I, I I like hearing those things like that. You know, like I hope I hope one day, like that's the things I want. I want to be, man. Tw Ten years ago, you did this really neat little thing, and it's and it's always those little small things that make such a big difference in yeah. in somebody's life that you don't even think about. It's like I try. That's that's the thing I like. You know, the do nightly stuff, right? Right. That's, that's right. cool. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. So, uh, Graf Ulrich has followed up. Apparently, the first part was for both of you. Uh, oh. and of course, I cannot uh, uh, let this go by. So, Pietro, do you have an answer for the uh, who's your favorite contemporary to fight coming up as a squire? I know it was so long ago for you, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, let me think back. Uh, actually, um, it was about four years ago. It was my very first crown tourney. Um, I was doing pretty good. I was doing pretty good. Um, I surprised myself. Um, and then I drew another Mad Celt Squire. Um, you guys might've heard of him, uh, Sebastianos. Oh yeah. He, yeah. He's a count now. Um, and I drew him and, um, that was the absolute longest fight. I actually watched the video a couple of days ago. And that fight, the video is nine minutes and 52 seconds. For a crownless tourney, that is, oh my God. And for any tourney, that's like, that's a lifetime. That's an eternity. Um, there was a lot of double kills. There was a lot of him hitting my arm because I would, I, after that tournament, I never did it again or I don't do it as much. But I'd chicken wing my arm out from my shield and he would tag me and. It was a brutal fight. I'm not even going to lie. I'd like to think that the reason why he didn't win that is because our fight lasted like forever and I wore him down for everybody. Yay me. Um, but he, he won. He won that that round. And the thing is, I didn't think I was that good of a fighter at that point. The fact is that every time before that I have fought Seabass, he uh, he beat me like a baby seal. A lot like it was it was it was a thing and after that i was like wait i know i beat him because it was two out of three and we went you know we went the distance on that and um super cool about it at one point he took my left arm i'm fighting right-handed he still got his sword and shield you know i'm single stick in this and he came in and i was like no and i threw this blind rap shot with my right hand and I hit him and he hit me and it was a double kill. I was super proud of myself, you know? I was super proud of myself. So for me, my most favorite contemporary fight actually happened four years ago or five, I don't know, maybe longer. But that to me was like the most awesome fight I've ever had. Um, Raven, you were cheering for me, <laughs> not him. 
<laughs> it was weird. She was actually cheering for me, and I wasn't even there. She always oh, cheers man. for you. She'll cheer you over me every time. You know, as long as you know that going into it, though, you're not disappointed, right? She still loves me at the end of the day, so I'm good. <laughs> All right. We talked about a couple of different – we talked about traveling earlier. So we got a question uh, from a lady, Elizabeth. She's, she's throwing in some great questions, so thank you for those, Elizabeth. Uh, what are your favorite Meridian events to fight at? And then what are your favorite out of kingdom events to fight at? Oh, it's my turn. Um, <laughs> my favorite Meridian event is, um, well, uh, it used to be Night's Gambit because you'd fight in a tournament all morning and then in the afternoon you'd go fight Knights. And I, like I said before, I love challenging myself. So it was great because it's like, oh, these knights are here not to fight each other, but to fight all of us. Let's do this. Um, and then before COVID, um, Knights Gambit was the last event I got to go to before everything shut down. And it was cool because I got to go to Knights Gambit as a knight. And uh, it wasn't as fun because I didn't fight in the morning. But the pickups were amazing. I mean, I got to fight some awesome, amazing um, up-and-coming fighters and give advice and it was super cool when people were like, hey, Sir Pietro, can I fight you? And I'm like, oh, hell yeah, let's go. Um, hell yeah. Um, so for me, um, it's that one. And then Red Tower for me is also special. Um, that's the event I got knighted at. That's also the event when I came back from Kalantir. It was the first event I went to and I made it to the finals against, uh, and it was me and Duke Dorson and he beat me. You notice how most of my stories end with, and I got beat, um, which is fine. Um, so you don't have to win everything to get knighted, guys. Just putting that out there. Um, but that was a super fun event. I had a blast. I think that's where I earned the name, uh, the nickname Bumblebee, because my shield didn't have the bees, but it was black and yellow. It kind of became a thing. And so for me, it's uh, it's Knight's Gambit, which, like I said, the dynamic Knight's Gambit's changed, and Red Tower. It's also the event I got knighted at. So, what about uh, then, uh, out of kingdom? Uh, Lily's War was fun when I lived in Kalantir. Um, haven't been able to make it back since I moved. Um, but I guess I would say go for it because I get to see my friends from all over the known world. Um, I haven't gone to a Pensac yet, but for me, go for it is definitely the top of the list as of right now, because like I said, I get to see my friends from Callens here. I get to see my friends from, you know, the West all over the place. And it's super cool. So Gulf Wars is amazing. Yes. All right. Well, what you got? Favorite, favorite events? Um, favorite events, um, Meridian Fighters Collegium. Um, always been my favorite event to fight at. Um, lots of training. Um, you know, they, Sometimes I do war practice in the afternoon and melee practice, just one-on-one -on -one practice in the morning. Um, it's a lot of individualized you get to work with guys very specifically. It's similar in a lot of ways to Night's Gambit in the afternoon. You get to fight with people, and then it can give you specifics, just you. Um, and I always find that really helpful and, and just a tremendous amount of fun. Um, and then for tournaments, um, Red Tower and Dreamstone Tournament are two of my favorites. Um, and out of kingdom, pick a fighting with Gulf Wars. Uh, I love that was the, my favorite part of fighting at Gulf Wars is the pickup fighting there. Uh, is fighting people I've never seen before and may never see again. Weapon styles I'm not used to fighting. Shields I'm not used to fighting against. Um, I absolutely love pickup fighting at Gulf Wars and Lily's War too, uh, to a certain degree as well. But I've I've been to many more um, Gulf Wars than Lily's. There you go. All right. Yeah, actually, I haven't. Uh, I I haven't had a chance to make it up. I, again, living in the southern end of the kingdom, man. Uh, Red Tower and Knights Gambit. Like I'm like six eight hours. Like I'm gonna make it up there one day. I'm not <laughs> in that way, damn it. No, it's worth the drive though. I, yeah. I do recommend it. I, I'm. It's it's one thing I hate about being so, so so removed is I miss so much of that. It's, it's as you mentioned, it's difficult to make that six hour drive. Yeah. Um. But it's definitely something, especially because I've got with my two ladies. It's not like it was just me jumping in the truck and going. It's a lot right. easier when you're right. playing the whole family up to an event. It's a lot more of a an involved process. You know. You know what really sucks is when I lived in Kalantir, I lived 20 minutes from the Lily's War site. Mm -hmm. Literally 20 minutes from the site. It was great. 
I would go to work and then in the evening go hang out and then go home and go to work. It was great. I took like two four day weekends back to back and then I would enjoy the weekends and then during the week I would just go, hey, I'm gonna go hang out. And now it's like, no, not happening, dude. It's gonna take you two days just to get there. Right. <laughs> now, admittedly, I, I will say this: the benefit is I'm only an hour from Gulf Wars. Mm. So like I can I can pop over to Gulf War site whenever I want to like I I do have that one benefit that's the one sort of upside. It's, it's, it's seriously it's awesome when you live that close to especially an event that big it's it's the coolest thing it's like you know, some people are like hey can I go to your house to take a shot sure man cool let's go you know, so all right we've got probably time for one maybe two more questions so I've got a couple of good ones here uh, so I, I like this one this is a little bit of a diversion but it's a good question. Uh, what would you say or do with someone who's interested in joining the SCA to get them hooked? Uh, this is from Wilhelm. S nope. I'm just going to go Wilhelm. Um, and, and Petra, I, I know specifically, like, I think you're the sh current Chatelaine or you were the Chatelaine at some point for Fourth Castle recently. So I, I know I've seen you post a lot of stuff. So I'll be curious to see your, hear your answer. I'm, um, I'm the Seneschal. <laughs> you you yeah. were the Chatelaine at one point, or I, I, I saw you posting something at one point about it. Now, no, 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 no. I've, I've been uh, heavy marshal and. and uh, uh, Seneschal. Never gotcha. been shadowing. You were but, doing. You, know, you, were, you were doing something early COVID that I, that I think maybe maybe I saw. You were doing the uh, the videos. The video, yeah. the, the how to videos and yeah. and yeah, we were doing that. That's so. right. I I remember you, you were involved in a project. I was like, hey, he he should do something. About it. <laughs> Anyways, okay. sorry. All right, Chen So what, what what is your uh, thing you would do to get somebody hooked to the SCA? Um. Who a uh, uh, fighter. Um, is to try and get them in armor, um, right. or at least get them with sword and shield and helmet on, and you know do some steps on movement, footwork, you know throwing some basic shots, that kind of a thing. Um, for me, that's my favorite part, uh, one of my favorite part activities wise, uh, and so I'm very passionate about it, and I want them to be passionate about it as well. And so for me, it was getting into the armor to do that. Um, outside of fighting, if it's somebody that's not interested in fighting. Um, I really try and talk about the people, um, the family, the chosen family that you make in, in the SCA, um, friends that you meet from far away that you never meet anywhere else uh, that you become close to. Um, everybody can use more good people in their lives. And the SCA has a lot of really good people in it. And I try to, to sort of say push that that's not the right word but you know um explain that you know to try and get people interested and then uh, of course talk about the diversity of, of activities and things there is to do in the SCA. Yeah. um how do you get somebody hooked uh that's a good question uh, you didn't even have to put it on screen i remembered ah took an hour but i got it um <laughs> A lot like Chima said, get them in armor. Um, if they're not a fighter, um, figure out what they like and um, put them in touch or get them connected with people that can um, help them and talk to them about it. Uh, I do metal work. I do wire work. I, I know you guys have seen some of it. Um, I do all kinds of different things. It's not just fighting. Um, it's a, If it's a fighter, um, their first practice, I'm basically their pal. They beat the crap out of me, and then we have fun, and I go, okay, that's great. And then, you know, uh, the next practice, I hit them back. <laughs> um, but I want them to get that feeling of, hell, build that confidence up and 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 give them, like Chinwa said, that sense of belonging. Um, we're, let's be real, we're, we're, we're history nerds. That's re really are. We're history nerds. And it's so hard to find people who are so into history. They do what we do. So when you find somebody that they're kind of not sure or they're on the fringe, you, you got to set that hook and you got to be like, look, you found your people. This is where you belong. But it's finding out what makes them excited, what makes them tick and then building on that. That's a great, that's, that's a really great point. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to throw this comment up too. And uh, Runa says every member is a Chatelaine. I yes, that's, that's I agree. Yeah. Every everybody can recruit. Everybody can be involved in that process. Uh, and on the other note, so I, and I know this is a fighting show, and all the all the fighters out there are going to curse me, but like not everybody's a fighter. Make sure you remember that. Oh, Just no, I, I, a, a six foot five, you know, burly dude doesn't mean he actually wants to put an armor and fight. So make sure you're asking that. Make sure you're embracing other things too. 
Um, I, I know I've seen some friends of mine that have had their significant others that have that no longer play in the SCA because they assumed they were going to be a fighter and wanted to put them in armor and just, just beat on them, but they didn't really embrace what they wanted out of the SCA. And, uh, you know, it was, it was, a, it, was a, it was a loss on our part, you know? So remember that not everybody's a fighter. Yeah. All right. Uh, last question, gents. We, we've had an amazing hour. I think this is, it's, it's always, it's, you know, I always look forward to like, I'm like, man, we're, we're, do we have enough questions? Are we going to have enough? And then we just, it's, Ten minutes later, we're done, right? Yeah. So, uh, all right. So, last question. This actually came in uh, from the last show. We didn't get to use it, so I want to pull it in for this one from Lady Kisa. Uh, what was your most nightly night? What is the moment where you have felt the most nightly? Like that that one, ooh, aha moment. And I know this is gonna be a little tough for you, Pietro, because you haven't had many, very many of them. <laughs> um, but it's, it's even I'll, I'll extend it. Think think through your like your career as a or even as a squire. What was like the time you're like, man, I, that was like the time I felt like a squire. I really, I was in that role. Um, I don't really. You mean me uh, change the first? I, I, yeah, let let me think about that one. If Tim has got an answer, sure. Um, years ago, uh, it was just before I got knighted, or, or the last Gulf Wars I went to, just before I got knighted. This was a sort of a specific uh, instance where, where I got a, a lot of um, sort of this idea kind of solidified with me. A lot of people kind of came up to me afterwards. I was fighting in a tournament, and the guy had from out of kingdom had legged me and armed me, so I was left-handed on my knees, which is the worst because he still has his sword and shield. And I would also like to say that this this answer goes for both of us, for him and for me. And I wish to God I could remember the guy's name. I just don't. I re also I remember is he was wearing blue and had a, a, a kite shield. And he, he took my legs and then took my arm and I switched everything out. And he said, my Lord, I was described at the time, said, my Lord, are you ready? And I said, as I'm on the verge of being killed, would you allow me to salute my lady one last time? And he kind of stepped back and he was, of course. And I got up, went over and kissed my lady and came back and got down on my knees. So, okay. <laughs> and the guy stepped up like he was going to throw a shot. They called Leon, stepped up like he was going to throw a shot, saluted me and yielded the field. Um, for him and for me, that was that moment. Wow. I, yeah. I just yeah. got chills. Yeah. That, that, that guy was just like, yeah. Oh. And he goes, that was that was amazing. I said, no, what you did was amazing. He said, no, what you did. <laughs> no, you, no, you. Yeah. It was really, it was really great. That was that that was one of those moments where I really I, I don't tell that story very often, um, just because I kind of feel like I'm I'm bragging, I guess. I don't know. I, I feel awkward telling that story, so I don't say it very often, but that was one of those moments. And like I said, for him as well as for me. So mm -hmm. All right, Pietro, you got some some uh, some, some heavy boots to fill there. What yeah, you got? I can't do that. <laughs> I can't do that at all. That's a that just I whoa, whew, I'm a little. Uh, whew, I'm about to. That was beautiful. Uh, <laughs> no, seriously, that was. Uh, for me, it's a little different. Uh, it was Castle Wars 2019. Uh, for months, the Shire had worked together to make matching tabards because we were going to fight as a unit. Because we're out in the boonies and we're in the middle of, you know, at the edge of the kingdom and we're at the taint of the kingdom because we got Trimeris, us, and then Atlantia. So we're a taint. Um, and we worked for months on these tabards. And I mean, we worked so hard and so many people. Um, thank you, Christy and Megan and my wife, Monica and Susan and all the ladies in the Shire that put up with us and actually did the work. Um, I just kind of was like, Hey, I have this idea. And they were like, Hey, we're going to make it happen. And I was like, bat, let's do this. Um, we worked so hard and here we are at Castle Wars. It's Saturday morning and all the fighters are starting to put on their taverns. And I'm like, Oh, this is cool. This is cool. And then we get out to the field, and I'm like, this is cool. We we match. And people started going, oh, my God, is that – who's that? What what unit are they? And I'm like, this is my Shire. <laughs> We're repping. And uh, it was super cool because I was at the front of the, the, the line. We were all lining up. And I look back, and I see 
these some of these fighters had like like a couple of months of experience but i look back and like they're all wearing matching tabards and they were hungry they wanted to hit something and they were like and then um i look back and i'm like wow this is awesome this is like a really cool thing and we had done this like seven years ago with another group of people but this was my turn to do it you know and it was super cool because like i had all these fighters and they were hungry and they were ready to fight i mean it was great until the moment they said if you are a knight or above or a baron or above yeah you just lost your legs and then i was mad but um because i realized that i can't fight for my legs because oh crap i'm a knight so really cool story and ends with me being pissed off <laughs> But that was a very nightly moment for me because I looked at this and it was like something that, you know, because um, Chinwa was part of it as well. Um, we helped train them for melees and all that. And it's like something we had built from the ground up. It was brand new fighters. Uh, most of them had less than a year of fighting experience. And I'm going to add to that real quick. I know we're running out of time, but um, it was super cool because there was the Legio Ferrum. It's a Roman uh, group we have. And they were on the opposite side. And I think we were doing a bridge battle. And my guys were, our guys, sorry, Chen, I'm, I'm selfish. Uh, our guys were at the front of it. And the Romans came charging. I mean, they were like, ah. And my guys just set up a shield wall. And they were like, you're not. They were like Gandalf. They were like, you shall not pass. And they stopped them. And then there was a rivalry that started that I don't think is over. So for me, that was a super nightly moment because like it was something that I had built in these fighters that we had trained and we, you know, had the heads getting like full and they were like, ah, we're going to do this. And then they did. So that was that was a really nightly moment for me. Not as romantic or as sweet as Chen was. I'm sorry. But, uh, you know, it was cool for me. It was cool. Well, it would be a, a tournament story and a war story. The balance of knighthood. There you go. <laughs> Well, gentlemen, this has been a pleasure for me. I, I, I really enjoy, uh, I, said, I, I think I, I knew both of you sort of knew your names and, and was excited to get both of you in for this. Uh, but hearing more of these stories, getting more of your background has been really uh, really good for me. Like I said, it's always nice to hear you know stories from other knights and out of, of the kingdoms, really getting to know my knights and my kingdom more uh, has really been a treat for me. And, and so I've enjoyed, especially the last couple episodes and the couple we've got coming up that really uh, doing, doing Meridia's proud. We, we have some really great, uh, some great chivalry. Awesome. All right. So uh, for our viewers out there, we've got a so coming up next week. As I mentioned, we have some more Meridian goodness. Uh, we will be joined by Sir Yashrub Desislavic and Sir Finn Varder, who has more names behind his name, but I forget. Uh, again, two amazing nights uh, and some more left handed uh, there that, you know, yeah, you know, all, all that one. Uh, y Yazi is a. Uh, also, a, 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 a glaive fighter, uh, primarily. So, anyone who, who watches Between Two Peers will, will uh, know that uh, Sir Yazi is actually Baby Ninja's knight. Uh, so, ask, come and ask all the questions about Kikichi and about the uh, how he trains the squires. So, that'll be fun. Um, other than that, make sure to like, uh, like, subscribe, push all those buttons down below, uh, hit that bell so you know when we're going live. But it's every Thursday at 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, which is 8 o'clock. Mountain Time, 9 o'clock Central Time, and 10 o'clock Eastern Time. I have to know all of those because time zones are a thing. All right. <laughs> uh, and last but not least, make sure to support us on Patreon, uh, patreon.com backslash KK Productions. Anybody who watches before, the link has changed. I made sure to update that today. So it is patreon.com backslash KK Productions because my name is hard to spell. So <laughs> that's a little easier to get there. So, so it looks up. We've got some great rewards and more stuff coming. Help us uh, support this channel and all the other channels that KK Productions supports. Is that it? Is that all the things? I think I said all the things. There you go. Guys, again, it was my pleasure. Thank you all for watching out there. Um, this has been Pietro, Chinwa, and Cal on Ask the Nights. Night, everybody. Night, guys.